Do you think Creative Commons is a solution to any of these problems? I think it is in part. They have five or six contracts. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with Creative Commons, but I, I strongly urge you to go uh, take a look at the website. The, the contracts are for free. Uh, the contracts will fit a variety of situations. Uh, they give the authors the opportunity to customize the degree or extent to which they want protection under copyright. One of the things that they allow the author to do is put limitations on their own term. Right now, one of the problems that people are finding with copyright is that it lasts for at least uh, the author's life plus 70 years. And there are a lot of scholars, including Lawrence Lessig at Stanford, who say basically copyright is forever. And uh, he's one of the people who's connected with the Creative Commons. And I think he's right uh, up to a point. Um, there hasn't been a real universal uh, adoption of that. I know David Byrne has adopted it and a few other people that are reasonably well-known you know, artists or musicians. But it's still, it's still up and coming. Uh, I think it's a good start, a very good start, and that you, the author, can determine the extent to which you will allow other people to do mixes of your work or, or to use them as they see fit as long as you're given credit. Um, from a philosophical standpoint, what has happened with the Creative Commons um, model is that they've borrowed heavily from the moral rights uh, model that's used in France and in Europe. And so in this country, our whole tradition uh, tends to go back to the statute of Anne and the notion of property that comes from England. Uh, the French uh, model is really different. And they're more concerned with the notion that the authors be given credit for their work and that the work not be butchered or bastardized. And so the Creative Commons agreements, which are free for you, uh, are kind of a combination of these two theories. And they're not the same. And uh, I think it's a real good start. Do you think that um, you should register your copyright with the Library of Congress before you, you engage in the Creative Commons licensing process? That'd be a good idea. You don't have to. Um, really, ever since the United States became a signatory to the Berne Convention, we did away with the old formalities that in the past you had to literally register a work for protection. Uh, and literally, the moment your work becomes, if it's original, becomes tangible, you have a copyright. So theoretically, you need not register it. Now, I always, especially as a, I did mostly copyright law for about 20 years, and so I always tell clients, or always told clients, yeah, do that. You, you know, you really need to do that to avail yourself of the, the remedies that are provided, you know, under statute and to go to federal court. But technically, you have a copyright. Um, so yeah, in the best of all worlds, you would, you would register it, and then you could do, and that's an interesting idea, then you could, uh, parse it out subject to the Creative Commons license that you think is most uh, appropriate. Well, if you didn't register it and you did the Creative Commons and somebody violated it, how would you sue them for infringement? How would you? There are some loopholes that if a certain period of time, I think it's up to five years uh, afterwards, you could go back and reverse kind of, uh, you could register it after the fact. Uh, there are also other theories of, and this gets kind of arcane, but you wouldn't have to just go under a copyright theory. You could go to state court and go under an unfair trade competition, or, which is basically just saying what they're doing is not fair. So in other words, yes, copyright is the best way to go when someone's taken your intellectual property if it's a copyright. Uh, there are a lot of different reasons. But for one, the judge is going to know what you're talking about. Uh, number two, there are already built-in um, penalties, so you don't have to prove the loss of sales that you could never prove. You can you know, ask for statutory damages, which are pretty severe in certain cases. Uh, but were you to have missed that opportunity and, and have that five years pass, and don't hold me to that five years, but it's about five years, you could still theoretically seek a remedy in court under common law theories in every state but Louisiana. And I don't know, the, since this is Napoleonic code, but there's going to be a parallel to it. Uh, you can still go to court and, and basically just say, hey, what they did is wrong. They took the property. A reasonable person would assume that that, you know, that person you know, created it and I created it. And so there are still ways you can kind of wiggle around it, but I, it's, that's a tough road to go.